Welcome back to the second quarter of Grassroots Footy. Brought to us, of course, by West End. Time to have a look at Division 1, Division 2. Division 1, Macca, Gazer sitting in first spot. Up against Tea Tree Gully. It's at the Clemson Oval. Gazer, a 46-point win on the weekend. 11 straight now for Gazer. They are unstoppable. Tea Tree Gully's form since the last bye, really. Last lost both games. So is this one just academic, Macca? Uh, it may well be. Look, uh, Gazer accounted for shock, who... Uh Pretty easily, uh, one of the top uh, top four teams. Tea Tree Gully, they will have to cause the upset of the year to uh, to uh, go here. Um, look, Tea Tree Gully, we actually kicked four last week, played a pretty good game. Uh, Cochran was pretty pretty good from as well. But Gazer, Christie, Downey, and um, Olive, you know, kicked four, three goals between them. So uh, look, Gazer just keeps soldiering on, and um, I won't say that they should hand the cup over now because there'll be a couple of teams that think they can get over the line, but uh, they're travelling too well. All right, we'll go with Gazer on that one. Jeps Cross, they're in eighth spot. Goody Saints in second spot. It's at Duncan Fraser Reserve. The form since the bye, Goody Saints have lost one, one last week by 54 points. Jeps Cross, they're the same. A loss followed by a 30-point win last week. Both teams come in the same. Positions on the ladder say Goody Saints, Macca, but We've seen it this year. Positions on the ladder sometimes don't matter. No, it doesn't. And Gypsies uh, you know, beat uh, Broadies last week, so that was a very good win for them. And it actually puts them uh, right right on the heels of the, the five at the moment. So if they uh, can get over Goody Saints, which I don't think will happen, um, that'll that'll be a good good position for them to keep at the five. A local for Jeps Cross uh, has been one of the better players all year. Uh, we spoke about him needing to make sure that he kept his games up. Uh, kick three on the weekend and Collins and Stengel were very good. Goody Saints, Hamblin kick six. You know, their big names were out in force mm -hmm. on the weekend. Uh, Wakeland uh, played a terrific game as well. So uh, Goody Saints look uh, too good for them. Bit, bit too much in the ruck. I know my man Matty Ullman's in the ruck for Goody Saints. Is that a key area for them in this game? Uh, it always will be. While you've got Wakeland and Ullman at your footy club, um, I'd be happy to have them two at the minute. Yeah, all right. Salisbury North, they're in seventh spot. They're up against Henley in third. It's at Salisbury North. Form coming in. Henley have had two wins in a row. Salisbury North, a win and a loss last week by 54 points to the Goody Saints. So Henley cruised uh, in winning by 68 points over Eastern Park. So you'd have yeah. to go with Henley. Oh, yeah, I'll go with Henley for sure. Um, but uh, look, Salisbury North, again, they have to win. We're at, we're at a position in the season now where there's not many more games you've got up your sleeve. You have to do it now or it's all over. And uh, if they can win, uh, that'll keep them in touch with the five. Uh, look, Henley would need to win too to be a top three chance. So uh, they've got a fair bit to play for as well. Henley, Philippo kicked seven on the weekend. Uh, so, you know, the, the big players are coming out to play. Uh, Brooks for Salisbury North, who's been a pretty good player all year, kicked three as well. But... Uh, I think uh, Henley uh, will keep going on and, and start to consolidate that number three position. You've touched on that a couple of times now, Macca. The, the senior players are starting to show good form. I mean, we know with senior players, they know when it's time to start to show good form. Is the last part now where we start to see the big-name players start to step up again? I think we will, as long as they're all in good, good nick. That's the thing they've had. As long as they've had uh, you know, good management through the year, mm. they've got the last half of the year to really show their best, and you know, they're, all, they're the ones that are going to be the important players. All right, Eastern Park, they're in 10th spot up against Foss Camden in 6th at Dwight Reserve. Eastern Park have had two losses since the bye. Foss, a loss, followed by a win over Tea Tree Gully last week, last week by 50 points. Could Eastern surprise in this one? They may do. They did surprise uh, someone down there the other week. The drum beater was going off yep. madly, and I'm sure he'll be going off again this week. But Foss have got a little sniff of the five, and I'm sure the weed will make sure that they're uh, fired up for this game. It's tough to win away. They're both the Division Two finalists from last year, uh, but Foss seem to be you know, miles apart from uh, Eastern Park. Uh, at the moment on the on the ladder, um, and I think Foss will probably get over in a, in a, not a not a big winning margin, but a, cl a close one. That's one. All right, Broadview there in fifth spot, Shocker in fourth. This is the match of the round, no doubt about it. It's at Broadview. Both teams come into this one after losing last weekend. Broadview are the surprise loser when they lost to the eighth placed Jeps Cross. Shock lost to top placed Gazer. You touched on that before, Macca. No surprise there. Who gets to turn their fortune around? Yeah, this will be a good game, be a cracker game. Again, Broadies, uh, you know, they're in that position of teetering back and forth. Uh, they need to stay in touch with the top four, the, or the top three, uh, if they can win. Um, but And if they lose, they're under the pump to hold fifth position. So uh, I think shock will be too good for them. Um, Juniper kicked three again on the weekend. Wilson and Angle were a couple of their best players. Uh, Broadview, uh, Camplin uh, kicked three. Uh, Stevens, Jarman and Mitchell, their best players. But uh, I think Broadview will need a lift from a few of their uh, their guns to uh, get over the top of the shock. So you reckon shock might just squeeze past? I think so. 
All right, it's time for us to have a look at the three marvellous outdoor kitchens that you can win from Complete Home Transformations. Of course, jump onto the website, go out and see the staff at Complete Home Transformations. They'll look after you if you can't get on the website. Now, to win one of these three outdoor kitchens, outdoor barbecues, all you need to do, 500 words or less, why your club should win a $5,000 outdoor kitchen, or in 50 words or less, why you should win a $5,000 outdoor kitchen. Of course, the other 5,000 outdoor kitchen from Complete Home Transformation goes to the best player in the Amateur Footy League this year, be it Division One, right through to Division Seven, the best player is gonna win that $5,000 outdoor barbecue. Macca, could your club at Paynham Norwood Union well, use the outdoor kitchen? Yeah, look, another burner went down on our barbie on the weekend, so we're operating on two, so we've gotta do a do a bit of an essay and see if we can get the uh, the main the big All right, The challenge: can you get a better one in than the Pain of Norwood Union Prize? A complete home kitchen, five thousand dollars worth. Time for Divi Two. Athelston, they're in tenth spot. They come up against Spock in second. It's at the Max Amber Sports Field. St Peter's, they're in blistering form at the moment. They've won both their games since the bye weekend. Athelston are taking big losses into this game, and on current form. You'd have to say it's going to be Spock by a big margin. Definitely on current form. Uh, we got a good look at Spock last week. Cantwell kicked 10. Um, he was unstoppable. Uh, look, Spock uh, will be too good for Athelston. But Athelston two weeks ago uh, were leading uh, Ross Trevor at half time. So there's a little bit for them to hang on to that they might be able to uh, compete with Spock as long as they do it for four quarters. Uh, Stop Cantwell, he was very good for him. Brad Thomas, very good player for Spock. Athelston, Thomas, Tarker and Fitzpatrick, you know, obviously tried their guts out, but um, Spock will have too Spock many guns. too much, all right. Walkerville there in fourth spot. Adelaide Uni in fifth. Match of the round, this one in Divi 2. It's at Walkerville. Both teams come in with good form, having won last weekend. Uni's win over Prince Alfred was a good confidence booster for them. Uh, I hear uh, the coach of Prince Alfred told me to tell you, Macca, 23 players injured at the moment, not 13 <laughs> anymore down there. They took it up to St Peter's boys uh, the week before, even though they lost that one. They're playing some good footy. Walkerville dominated old Iggy's last week, so this is going to be a good game. Will be a very good game. Walkerville have just been uh, edging along nicely, and mm. they're positioning themselves beautifully in this competition. Adelaide Uni, look, JK out there, Johnny Kernahan, he will be a little bit chuffed at the moment. I haven't heard from him lately, so uh, he must be keeping, keeping it, playing it down a little bit, but I'm sure I'll hear from him soon. Walkerville, Barry, Pierce, Linder and Beard were their best players. Uh, they're, they're becoming a very, very dangerous side. Uni will have their work cut out. Um, I like to tip a draw every week. And I think this, this is, is the one. This is going to be a draw. All right, let's have a look. PAC, they're in sixth spot, up against Port Districts in seventh at Park Nine. Look, PAC have got multiple injuries. We just touched on that then. Port Districts, for me, Mac, it seemed to be the team right now that might cause some problems in this last half of the season. Well, if they can win on the weekend, that puts them back on level terms with Prince Alfred. So uh, it's a big game for them. Oh, it's a big game for both of them. Uh, Port Districts have got, got plenty of guns. Um, and if they all fire, they're going to make it pretty tough for Prince Alfred College. Uh, I think Port Districts will win. Clay kicked six for him last week, so he's becoming a handy player for them. McDowell, uh, very good and gunning for the, uh, the, the, the district boys. Prince Alfred, Rogan, Hugo and Watson were their good players, but I think Port Districts will uh, get over it. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. Uh, Modbury, they're in eighth spot. They're up against Paynham, Norwood Union in ninth at Modbury. The bye hasn't helped either team, neither with a win in uh, their previous two games since that. Paynham looked good. You looked good a couple of weeks ago against the old Iggies. Last week you took a big hit, of course. That was disappointing for you. And, of course, Modbury, they've lost to Ross Trevor and they took a big hit themselves to Port District. So... Both teams are going to turn their fortune around, one in this game. I know you'd like it to be your boys, Macca, so where's it going to go? Well, it's uh, now or never for our boys because if we lose this game, that'll put us two games clear in the relegation zone. So it's, uh, it's got a monumental impact on our football club. Uh, Modbury have uh, beaten us early on the year in a close game. Uh, uh, Gear, Davy, and Hoffmeyer have been very good plays, players for them. Um, we've got a few back, but they're still a little bit underdone. Uh, a few of our young fellas last week struggled against the, the, the bigger frames of Spock. Um, but, um, you know, players like Rowett and Burkhart really tried tried hard. Walshaw was good again for us. Um, but, you know, we, we need to make sure we've got 21 having a go or us. we will not get near them. All right, at the start of the game, Mac, it's been a problem, not just for your team, some teams in this game, a good start could actually decide the game. Well, we started really well last week. We led at quarter time. Um, and then from then on, it was a non, uh, yeah, non-committed group, a very insipid effort. 
and uh, I think as a group we're all embarrassed. So uh, we've got to try and rectify this weekend. some ground. All right, Old Iggy's there in third spot. Ross Trevor in first spot. It's at Hunter Park. Ross Trevor with only one loss this season. Old Iggy's, they were in good form leading into the bye, but haven't been able to recapture that form. We spoke with the coach just a while ago. You've got to go with Ross Trevor. Well, you don't have to, but it would seem that Ross Trevor have just got too many weapons at the moment. Yeah, I think Ross Trevor all, all the way across. But um, Old Iggy's have got those top six, seven players that are exceptional. Uh, and if it's a little bit dewy, a little bit wet, uh, I think this would come into play for Riggies and uh, might give them a good chance of beating Ross Trevor. I'm actually going to tip a little bit of an upset because uh, Old Iggy's need to win to, to mm. try and stay in the top three. So I think this might be the game that uh, there's an upset in, at hand. Romeo Willoughby, Alasdrancini for um, Iggy's, very good players. And Ross Trevor, I see uh, Lister got his three again and, and probably had his three beers and three pies. <laughs> uh, Manuel, Manuel got four and O'Malley and Holland uh, were other good players for Ross Trevor. Good unit all over, Ross Trevor. St. Iggy's have got those really, really good players at top seven or eight. And mm. if their bottom, their bottom half has a good day out, this will be a really good so game and they might get over might it. Sneak them. I think the St. The Iggy's might get out of the top. Time to take a break. Still lots to come on Grassroots Footy. Stay with us.